Please stand. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words. Guard me as the apple of your eye. In the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty and sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly earlier. When you read this, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to human beings in other generations as it is now being revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this I became a minister by the gift of God's grace that was granted me in accord with the exercise of his power. To me, the very least of all the holy ones, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the inscrutable riches of Christ and to bring to light for all what is the plan of the mystery hidden from ages past in God, who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the principalities and authorities in the heavens. This was according to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness of speech and confidence of access through faith in him. The word of the Lord. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. 
Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, who then is the faithful and prudent steward when the master will, whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, he will put him in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour, and will punish the servant severely, and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations, nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of that person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of that person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Yesterday we had our chrism mass down at the cathedral for all the priests of the diocese. And, and afterwards, we usually have this big feast and a nice meal. But because of COVID, we weren't able to do so. So we planned our own. The diocese doesn't know about it. But all the, the junior clergy, so the priests, ordained less than 10 years we were all hanging out, chatting, having a good time. And so we were over at St. Phil's. So Father Dave, he still likes to think that he's, he's a young priest. You can tell him I said that. But he also has a new roommate, Father Chuck Clamett, who just moved to Bartonville. And Father Chuck has been a priest for like 25 years. But he still likes to think he's the youngest priest of the diocese, a title I hold. And if you don't know him, he's, he's great people. But he... He was chatting with me, talking, and just sharing some wisdom, because our whole conversation was on the priesthood. It was a joyous day. We renewed our promises. It was great. And he told me about a conversation he had with Father John Dietzen, who was down at uh, Holy Trinity down in Bloomington for a long, long time, wrote for the Catholic Post. And Father Dietzen challenged him and said, what are you doing practically to love your people? And Father Chuck said that it kind of shook him up a bit, because he he did all the things, but was his day-to-day -day operation configured to the gospel? And that was something that, that kept me up last night as I was thinking about it, because obviously we're all here because we believe. We all want the gospel to transform our lives, but how often we forget to live it out when we're interacting with others, when we're, when we're thinking about our day. And and so I was, I was trying to figure out a remedy, and so I turned to, to the gospel. And, and I remembered yesterday was the Feast of St. Paul of the Cross, and he founded the Passionists. So there's a Passionist priest who, who had, he's down in Bessemer, Alabama. He runs a high school, Krista Ray High School, for the very underprivileged people of Bessemer, right outside of Birmingham. And, and he said, he gave us a quiz. We were all in seminary at the time. There were a group of about 10 of us. He said, write down the answer to this. Who is the most important person? Where is the most important place? And what is the most important time? Write your answers to these things. And so we were all in seminary. We're writing these pious answers. Who's the most important? Jesus. Where's the most important place? Obviously, the, the church. And what's the most important time? And then there was a debate between us over whether... Uh, whether um, 
Christmas or Easter was the most important because obviously Christ had to rise from the dead, but he couldn't rise from the dead unless he was first born. So then we got into this whole theological debate and, and the priest just stopped us and he's like, guys, just be quiet for a second. Right? You must be prepared for at an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. And we're like, what are you talking about? He said, who's the most important person? The person right in front of you. When is, where's the most important place? Exactly where you are. And what is the most important time right now? Because we can't have anything else. And it was such simple answers. And as I looked around the community that he had, he had been shepherding for years, I realized that they actually lived that out. Right? They, the person that was in front of them was the most important person. Their mind was on the task at hand, and they weren't trying to be somewhere else. And I think of that as, as we listen to this gospel because, one, because the priest referenced it when he was giving us his explanation, but also because we don't know when the Lord is going to come. He's going to come like a thief in the night, steal us back to the Father. So we must live each day, each moment, as if it is the most important, and the task at hand as if it's the most important. Always trying to share the good news, to live out the gospel, never using any, any moment just as idle time. Because again, we don't know when the hour's coming. And so if we do that, then every task becomes a moment to share the good news, to love our brothers and sisters. And that's a very concrete way that we can live the gospel as Father Deedson challenged Father Chuck. Let's stand as we bring our prayers and petitions before the Lord. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Bishop Janke, for Bishop Tilke, and for all the clergy throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Pray for all government leaders, that they might lead with justice, prudence, and wisdom. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in peace in our nation, for an end to all division, that all might focus their lives on the gospel and love. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick and suffering throughout the world, especially those suffering from mental illness or addiction. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died, especially for the repose of the soul of Mark Hardesty, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel for the freedom of the Catholic Church in America. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Good and gracious God, you know our prayers before we ask you. Grant these and all the prayers that we hold within our hearts if they be in accord with your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, Louis's brother, Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.